Uh, thank you very much for getting here back after lunch. Uh, let me start by thanking Wojtek, Lydia, and uh, the conference organizers to give me uh, the opportunity to present. The microphone. Yes. It doesn't work? It's too far. I can. It's too far. Is it better now? Yes. Okay. Anyway, I was just saying that uh, I really would like to thank Wojtek, Lydia, and um, the conference organizers to give me the opportunity to present uh, um, a recent uh, OECD study on open science and some other uh, related uh, OECD activities uh, that are focusing, focusing on, uh, on this issue. Uh, let me start by uh, mentioning um, the OECD pr principles and guidelines for access to research data from public funding. Uh, probably uh, many of you are aware of this uh, OECD uh, recommendation that was drafted uh, uh, between 2006 and 2007 to actually recommend to OECD member countries uh, to share uh, uh, and make uh, um, the data arising from, uh, from uh, uh, public money uh, with the public uh, uh, researchers and, uh, and the society in general. Uh, this recommendation was, uh, uh, the, the preparatory work to draft this recommendation took place actually even before 2006 and 2007, so uh, more or less 10 years ago. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the world and also the scientific enterprise uh, has changed dramatically. So uh, back to uh, 2011, um, an OECD committee, uh, an OECD group that is working on science and technology policy, decided to uh, go back uh, to open science and try to uh, capture and investigate uh, uh, the latest uh, dynamics uh, that, that were happening in, uh, in policy making cycles around this, uh, this issue. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, other parts of the organization has started working on other open science related themes. Uh, for example, we have colleagues uh, that are very active in uh, uh, understanding um, what, what, what are the dynamics in policy making related, for example, to public sector information, uh, open government, uh, open gov data, that in some cases can be strongly related to, uh, to open research data. Uh, also other colleagues uh, that are um, um, in charge of uh, um, uh, working with uh, policy makers in the field of education um, have recently started working on open educational resources and now also on MOOCs. So you can see that uh, many OECD directorates, many OECD teams are currently working with, uh, with member countries and other countries to understand these different uh, uh, issues that in a sense are all related to open science. Uh, but to come back um, more to the, to the project um, um, I have been working on together with uh, um, OECD delegates, uh, this is a project that uh, has been carried out by a working party of, of the city that is focused on technology and innovation policy, TIP, um, and it has been carried out over the last two years. Uh, so the project, the final report of this project will be um, available soon. I'm mentioning the fact that uh, it was carried out by this working party that is traditionally a working party dealing with innovation policy because there, there, there was really a genuine interest in a policy maker dealing with innovation in trying to understand better the dynamics of open science uh, and potentially making the link between open science uh, and innovation. Uh, this project, uh, although acknowledging the fact that open science is much more than open access to publication and, da and data, it, invo it involves processes, uh, uh, software, methodologies, uh, culture, uh, has been uh, given that uh, in a sense it was the first OECD overview of policies to promote uh, open science, decided to, to focus on uh, policies to promote open access to scientific publication and policies to promote uh, open research data. Um, during these two years, uh, let me also mention that uh, some other colleagues uh, uh, with whom we are working together that are a little bit more focusing on, uh, on the development of indicators uh, given that they were pushed by the delegates focusing on uh, <coughs> trying to collect indicators on science, technology and innovation, they also launched um, a preliminary survey uh, to try to better understand uh, the behavior of scientists that had uh, uh, a, a number of questions related to open science. Uh, the results of this service will be probably available soon and uh, I mean, to those uh, that are interested uh, you can contact me and I can put you in contact with, uh, with these colleagues. Um, as I was saying, uh, this project carried out by the Technology and Innovation Policy Working uh, Group is coming to an end. 
uh, but open science has become uh, uh, so uh, interested for many uh, governments uh, uh, within the city that there will be some uh, follow-up activities, mostly undertaken by a group that is called the Global Science Forum. And these activities will be probably uh, mostly around uh, uh, research data, infrastructure and incentives. So really the, the topics that uh, you are discussing uh, these days at this conference. Um, but why um, policymakers, let's say our counterparts in ministries, uh, uh, ask the OECD to focus on open science? And the reason is, is clear, as we have been debating earlier, uh, it's because the scientific enterprise is evolving. Uh, ICT technologies are offering new opportunities to disseminate, share uh, research results. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, for the same reasons, uh, thanks to the ICT, science is becoming increasingly data driven. Uh, in the picture, you can see um, um, a graph showing basically the booming of uh, uh, research publications around uh, text and data mining techniques. And you can see that uh, uh, since the 2000s, the number of these papers really exploded. So for all these reasons, science is evolving. And uh, at UCD, uh, we would like to understand uh, uh, better how this is evolving and uh, what is the role that uh, policymakers can, can play in order to um, uh, uh, make it the most of this evolution. Uh, so what do we care about open science? Um, as it has already mentioned today, uh, we care about open science for many reasons. Because it can uh, make the scientific enterprise itself uh, more efficient. It can allow uh, more science for the same scientific results. It can also uh, increase transparency and quality. But researchers and scientists uh, in, they are not the only, um, the only groups that can benefit from, uh, from open science. Uh, it can also speed, open science can speed the transfer of knowledge uh, from the academia to the industry, for example. And it can also maximize spillovers uh, uh, to, to different parts of the economy and the society. And in some cases, uh, it can also help uh, uh, addressing uh, some social challenges more effectively. Uh, for example, let's think about uh, aging population or climate change. In some cases, link to linking together different sources of data could really speed up uh, uh, the advancement of, uh, of, uh, uh, of solutions uh, in very specific fields. Um, yeah, just a few examples. Uh, uh, for example, if we take uh, PubMed Central, um, uh, a good proportion of the users are not necessarily coming from the research community. There are also uh, users coming from the business sector or, or individual citizens. And there is also, for example, some evidence that shows that uh, uh, in many cases, SMEs would like to take advantage of, uh, of the results uh, 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 coming out from, uh, from, uh, from the academia. But uh, uh, in many cases, they cannot necessarily afford uh, uh, the subscri subscription cost uh, um, to, uh, to get publications uh, and, uh, and in some cases, data. Um, so, um, even if there are uh, um, many impacts that, uh, uh, let's say, um, policymakers care a lot about, uh, there are still many open questions or many unknowns related to um, open science, um, uh, the open science phenomenon. Um, for example, uh, uh, we know about the open access citation advantage, but still, uh, a clear quantification of this, of this advantage uh, is subject, subject to debate in the literature. Uh, if we try to uh, get and collect uh, uh, estimates on the, the economic impacts uh, of uh, open science and open data, uh, we can get many, many different estimates around, but uh, I mean, these estimates tend to be very, very diversified, showing very, very different impacts. It's clear that uh, trying to uh, carefully assess those impacts is certainly very difficult, but uh, in the future, especially if uh, more and more policymakers uh, we care about this issue, it will be very, very important to uh, try to understand what are the different impacts on different groups of the, of the open science ecosystems. Uh, and again, not only on science, but also on innovation. Um, the open science ecosystems is certainly complex. We have uh, many different actors, uh, researchers uh, um, in university and public research organization. Uh, we have policy makers, for example, uh, in national ministries, uh, uh, but also in uh, supranational entities, uh, as uh, we heard um, earlier today. We have um, uh, people working in libraries, repositories, data, ce data centers. We have also funders, not only public funders, but also uh, uh, funders from uh, the private nonprofit uh, uh, community that uh, lately has become very active in promoting open science. 
let's think about the Wellcome Trust in the UK or you know, the recent uh, uh, open access policy of the Gates Foundation. Uh, so even uh, private non-profit uh, organizations are really pushing for, for this today. Uh, and then we also have uh, 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 actors belonging to the, to the business community, business themselves, who can uh, benefit from the release of publication and data, and also private scientific publishers. Um, you can see that all these actors, uh, they do not, do not have necessarily the same incentives, the same goals. So this makes sometimes uh, um, uh, the life of policymakers uh, a bit difficult, because finding the right incentives for all is not uh, necessarily a straightforward uh, um, process. Um, this picture shows the uh, responses of um, a survey on uh, science, technology, and innovation policies that the OECD carries out every two years. Uh, the latest survey was carried out in 2014. And uh, uh, through this survey, we asked to OECD can member countries and uh, actually also non-member countries who, uh, who wish to join the service information about the latest policy developments in very specific areas. And um, the red column is, um, uh, is, uh, show, shows you the number of countries that actually said that in the, la in the last two years, uh, open science was an area of um, uh, active policy maker, make, making where um, many initiatives has radically changed. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, open science is uh, among the, let's say, uh, top rankers. Um, uh, and again, I mean, this, is, uh, this, is, this signals the fact that uh, in many OECD countries, uh, um, open science has become a very active area for policy making. Uh, but uh, what has countries done? Uh, let's take a brief overview of uh, the different policy instruments that uh, the OECD countries, and in some cases, uh, non-member OECD economies, has implemented in, or in order to promote open science. Um, they have put in place uh, enabling, uh, in, enabling um, enablers, enabling uh, initiatives. This, for example, includes uh, uh, building infrastructure to allow uh, sharing of data and publication. Uh, this has been done in, uh, I would say, the majority of OECD countries, even if in some cases, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, some duplications could have been avoided or, or some more uh, integration at the international level uh, uh, would be applicable for the future. Uh, but this, this can also include uh, uh, initiatives in order to promote an open science culture. For example, uh, some German universities are very active, uh, like the, uh, are very active in uh, um, organizing workshops uh, or uh, training uh, for scientists, and not necessarily the scientists that uh, have uh, are already know very well the benefits of open science. But, uh, but those researchers that uh, are perhaps less aware of open science possibilities, in order to try to, to let them know. Uh, what are the possibilities offered today? In some other cases, uh, there also have been uh, some initial amendments uh, to national copyright <coughs> frameworks in order to make them increasingly open science friendly. Uh, for example, uh, in 2014, uh, um, amendments have been passed um, in Germany and the UK uh, precisely to uh, allow uh, uh, an easier redistribution of, uh, of scientific output. And enablers also include, of course, uh, uh, the development of those skills that are necessary to make open science happen. Because uh, in many cases and in many fields, uh, uh, researchers may have already the skills in order to uh, make the most of repositories, uh, uh, technologies that uh, we can use to share data. But uh, in many other cases, this is not the case. Uh, so this is certainly a, a, a crucial skill for the a crucial issue for the future. Um, we have also many incentives. Uh, what we have observed is that uh, typically incentives uh, um, take the form of financial in incentives. For example, uh, uh, grant agreements uh, can cover article processing charges uh, or the cost associated to uh, cleaning data sets in order to uh, making them available. Uh, but what we, what we have also observed is that uh, um, there are other kinds of incentives that uh, at least so far have, to a lesser degree, uh, implemented uh, in countries. And I'm referring to, for example, um, national evaluations of researchers. Today, uh, as we were also discussing before, 
Um, taking into account uh, open science, uh, open data efforts uh, in national evolution of researchers is not necessarily taking place. Uh, some countries uh, are already, let's say, discussing about introducing these, possi these, these possibilities, these aspects in national evaluation, but very little has been done so far. For example, in Spain, in some <coughs> policy papers, uh, they are um, uh, really taking into consideration the fact that in order to push open science forward, it would be really important uh, to change the criteria for evaluation, evaluating researchers, but, uh, but so, far, so, so far very little has been implemented. Um, and uh, I mean, if nothing else works, uh, of course, we, ha we have also mandatory rules. Uh, that typically takes uh, the form of requirements, uh, for example, in, uh, in, in grant agreements. Uh, you can ask for, uh, you know, I mean, uh, ma make, it, make it a requirement to, to release a publication uh, 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 that has been funded uh, through a particular grant or uh, develop data management plans. But, uh, I mean, requirements are certainly important, but in, some, in many cases, if the right incentives are not there, requirements alone cannot be the solution. Um, so, uh, to sum up, uh, uh, another issue that we observed is that uh, uh, across OECD countries, and, uh, open access policies are much more widespread uh, than um, open data policies. Uh, I mean, this is, this is, in a sense, driven by the fact that uh, um, open data is more difficult than open access. Uh, when we have a paper, uh, of course, somebody who's writing a paper and submitting it to a publisher, this person is doing that because uh, uh, this person wants the paper to be released uh, to, I mean, the widest possible audience. A paper is also something that uh, it's easier to define. Typically, I mean, we can all agree that the paper starts with a title and it ends with some references. And the same is not true for a data set. Um, first of all, I mean, uh, some researcher can, uh, can feel that uh, with a data set they can uh, perhaps uh, publish 10 papers and they cannot see the immediate benefit to release it. Uh, after a first paper has been published, then uh, uh, even the definition of the data set is, I mean, it's a bit complicated. What is a data set? It can be an Excel, Excel spreadsheet that uh, uh, an anthropologist has put together by doing some, uh, some field research in a remote uh, por a portion of the planet, or it can be a huge, massive collection of data collected by machine. So this diversity and, uh, let's say, I mean, uh, uh, a less clear um, alignment of incentives uh, makes uh, uh, the, the, des the design of open data <coughs> policies uh, more complicated uh, than, in the the, the, than, it, than it is the case for, uh, for open access policies. Uh, many, many funding agencies we have observed uh, are introducing uh, requirements and uh, are ready to allocate money to, to promote for uh, open access and open data policies, but uh, less has been done in terms of uh, incentives. Uh, and again, let me stress once again that uh, uh, we think that this, this is really a crucial uh, point because uh, we need the right incentives in order to really convince uh, researchers to, uh, to share uh, especially data. Um, and uh, many initiatives uh, uh, have been implemented uh, to, to, to create and develop uh, platforms, uh, but less attention so far has been focused on, on, on skill development. And again, this is another crucial issue because we can have the best repository in the world, but uh, if then, I mean, many researchers uh, not, do not have necessarily the skills to use them, uh, perhaps uh, these repositories uh, cannot uh, maximize their impact. Uh, what we, we have also observed is that uh, uh, in some countries there are fully fledged uh, uh, open science strategies, for example, um, uh, in Finland, they have recently re released a strategy that is uh, a very comprehensive strategy uh, uh, dealing with uh, not only uh, access to publication but also data. And it is, it's a long-term long uh, strategic planning. But in, a, in, in, a, in a ma the majority of the city countries, there are, let's say, individual country initiatives and, polity, in, and, and policies, as, as, as well as uh, many bottom-up bottom, bottom initiatives uh, arising from different communities uh, different uh, institutions, uh, universities, uh, libraries, research centers. Uh, not only city countries, but also non-members, in particular the BRICS, are also extremely active in uh, uh, policies to promote open science. And interestingly enough, at least uh, for uh, China and India, uh, they have been uh, particularly active in promoting uh, open data sharing. Um, 
Just a few words about uh, international efforts and coordination. Um, uh, we all agree that science and research do not stop the, um, at, borser, at borders. Uh, so coordinating international efforts to promote open science uh, can certainly facilitate no, uh, the transfer of knowledge. Um, there have been uh, many examples of, uh, of uh, international coordination to facilitate this. Uh, I was mentioning the OECD principle um, uh, of 2007. Uh, UNESCO or uh, the World Bank are international organizations that are actually uh, very active in promoting open access and open data. And there are also some uh, uh, regional initiatives. For example, uh, La Referencia is uh, um, a regional repository uh, um, built by a number of Latin American countries uh, and sponsored by the Inter-American Development Bank. And of course, I mean, we are in Europe. Uh, um, the European Commission is certainly uh, a big, big player. Uh, that uh, is pushing uh, forward uh, open access agendas in Europe. Uh, so what's next? Um, as I was saying before, open science has become really a hot topic for policy making uh, in many OECD countries. So even if uh, um, uh, this project I was referring to um, has come to an end and uh, the synthesis report will, will be soon released, um, there will be other uh, scheme of works that will keep investigating the issue of uh, open science and open data. In particular, some colleagues uh, um, that are working uh, in a working group called um, the OECD Global Science Forum uh, will start work, uh, working very soon on issues uh, rela closely related to um, the infrastructure and incentives uh, to promote data sharing, uh, data sharing of uh, uh, research data sharing. Uh, but uh, um, it's really likely that open science will become one of the key issues uh, of uh, uh, at least uh, uh, the teams involved in science and technology policy at the OECD. Uh, since uh, uh, in, uh, in October 2015, there will be an OECD ministerial meeting. Uh, so uh, ministers uh, for higher education uh, and research or of OECD countries uh, and uh, non-member invited countries will meet together in Korea uh, to discuss about uh, policies uh, around uh, science, technology, and innovation. And uh, open science has been chosen as one of the key themes for this meeting. Um, typically, the outcome of the uh, OECD ministerial meeting are uh, setting uh, an agenda for, for the work of the organization in the future. So it's very likely that we will get the request from member countries to investigate even forward this topic. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. Um, we are planning to release uh, the synthesis report uh, on open access and open data soon on uh, the OECD and World Bank uh, um, innovation policy platform. I will be very happy to share the link with you uh, as soon as, uh, as we have it. And in the meanwhile, if you need more information or you have questions, you can contact me at uh, this email address you, you can find here. Thank you very much.